The geometry exam is going to be on Thursday. We're going to briefly go over the review sheet. This question is asking about the volume of a sphere. Well, we know that volume equals the area of the base times the height. However, being how it's a sphere, we go to our reference sheet. On our reference sheet, we have the formula V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. V in this example is 44 0.6022 equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. From here, we have to solve the equation. To get rid of the fraction, I can multiply both sides by 3. When I do that, I get 4 pi r cubed, and I get 44.6022 zero two two times three which is one three three point eight zero six six to get all by itself I divide by four pi when I divide that by four pi I get ten point six four seven nine nine zero nine at this point, I have to do the cubed root. To do the cubed root in your calculator, you do math 4. That gives me to the nearest tenth, 2.2. The student wrote the sentence, 4 is an odd integer. What is the negation? Well, the negation is the opposite. The negation of 4 is an odd integer. This 4 is not an odd integer. When it asks for the truth value, truth value means true or false. 4 is not an odd integer is true. Four is not an odd integer, true, choice two. We have a song. We know that converse switch the order. Inverse negate both. And the contrapositive. switch the order and the beauty. Cool. So, for converse, I'm just switching the order. It is a right angle going to come first. So, this one so far is the top one so far is okay. The second one so far is okay. This one does not start with it as a right angle. This one does not start with it as a right angle. In the back, an angle measures 90 degrees. Notice that choice two does not start with it. Therefore, that can't be the answer. Choice one is your answer. Point A is on line M. Here's line M. Here's point A. How many distinct planes will be perpendicular to line M and pass through point A? Well, there's only one. It's hard for me to show you here, but the plane that would pass through here would be the only one that passes through. Interior angles of a regular polygon. We have a song for that. We know that exterior is 360. Interior, we use 180 and minus 2. Now, it's not telling us how many sides it has. It's asking how many sides it has. The best thing to do here would be to test each one. 180 times 5 minus 2 would be 180 times 3, which is 540. To find just one, we would divide it by the number of sides, and we would get 108. 
That's not the answer. Next, I'll try six sides. 180 times 6 minus 2 is 180 times 4, which is 720. To find just 1, we divide by the number of angles, and we get 120. That's our answer. Draw a picture. A is 70, C is 80. It doesn't have B, so to find B, I'm going to do 70 plus 80 plus X equals 180. I'm going to solve the equation. And I get 30. To put the sides in order, I would first, I would have to determine the order of the angles, being how they're only giving me the angles. Well, the smallest angle is 30, so the smallest side is opposite from that. The next smallest side, excuse me, angle is 70, so the next smallest side is BC. And finally, the largest angle is 80, which makes the largest side AB. They're going from least to greatest. A, C, B, C, B, B. Let's go through each choice. E, H, and B, C. Coplanar means they could be contained in the same plane. Could B, C, and E, H be contained in the same plane? Yes. If you take a plane and put it diagonally through those would be on the same plane. Let's just go through the rest of the choices. 2, F, G, and A, B. F, G, and A, B are not coplanar. There's no way they can be on the same plane. Choice 3, E, H, and A, D are skew. That means they'll never touch, they'll never intersect, they're not parallel. E, H, and A, D are parallel to each other. Therefore, they're not skew. F, G, and C, G F, G, C, G are obviously not skew because they intersect. Again, the answer is choice. We know that perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. So we first get y by itself. And I know that the slope of this line is 1 half. If my line is going to be perpendicular, I must find the negative reciprocal of that. We flip and we negate to get negative 2. Now, if it passes through this point, I know that my m perpendicular is negative 2, my x is 4, my y is 3, and I'm going to substitute in to find b. 3 equals negative 2 times 4 plus b. 3 equals negative 8 plus b. Solve for b. b equals 11. Once I have B or M, I can substitute by A to Y equals MX plus B to get my answer. The question is asking for the volume. We, of course, can draw a picture. The height is 7 centimeters. The diameter has a base of 10 centimeters. But the important thing here is to know when we see volume, that volume equals the area of the base times the height. And it will be length times width, or pi r squared. And we have that from our song. So if it's a cylinder, it's going to be pi r squared. The shape does not come to a point, therefore we do not put one third in front of it. From here, I substitute into the formula. 
the radius is 5, the height is 7. We look to see if it wants the answer in terms of pi or rounded. It wants the answer in terms of pi. So I do not type pi in. I do 5 squared times 7. I can use the calculator for that if I'd like. And I believe that is 175 pi. The question is also asking for the lateral area. Well, lateral area is on the reference sheet. Again, in terms of pi, don't type pi in. And we get 70 pi. Volume, area of the base times the height. Lateral area, go to your reference sheet. Length. Length is distance. Now what's going to be helpful here is for us to put it on a graph. So let's quickly do that so we can more efficiently get this problem done. So let's go to my graph. On your exam, you will have graph paper. There we go. It wants the length of AC. So I'm going to only plot AC here. A is 3, 0. C is 2, 4, 6, 7, negative 2, 4, 6, 8. I know the distance is radical delta x squared plus delta y squared. You can subtract your x values to find the delta x, or you can count. I like to count. Changing x. 1, 2, 3, 4. Changing y. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 4 squared is 16. 8 squared is 64. I'm going to just find myself some more space here. D equals radical 80. Now it asks for the answer in simplest radical form. So we have to break it down into our perfect squares, our non-perfect squares. 16 and 5, we take the square root of the perfect square, and that would be my answer. To write the equation of a circle, we know we have to negate what's in the parentheses. So I start by making two sets of parentheses, x, y, squared, squared, plus. Negative 3 becomes plus 3, positive 2 becomes minus 2. The right-hand side is the radius. So, if the diameter is 10, the radius is 5, and 5 squared equals 25. If the coordinate is 0, then there would be no parentheses. We have a song for translations and dilations and all other transformations. We know translations we add, dilations we multiply. We're going to start by writing all of our points in organized fashion. S is 2, negative 2. W is negative 2, negative 4. A is negative 4, 6. N is 0, 8. We always start at the right, so we do the D of one half. We know, again, that dilation multiply. I'm multiplying each coordinate by a half. Two times a half is one. Two times a negative half is negative one. Negative one. Negative two. Negative two. Three. 
0, 4. Again, I multiply each coordinate by 1 half. Now that I have those, I draw hours again, and I perform the translation. Translation's the end. I'm going to add 4 to all the x values. I'm going to add negative 2 to the y values. 1 plus 4 is 5. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. 0 plus 4 is 4. Negative 1 plus negative 2 is negative 3. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. 3 plus negative 2 is 1. 4 plus negative 2 is 2. It is not asking us to graph them. It's asking us to state them and label them. We have done that. We have S double prime, W double prime, A double prime, N double prime. Finally, a proof. Being how we're dealing with midpoints here, we're going to need to find midpoints. First, start by graphing what they give you. A is negative 2, 4, 6, negative 2. B is 2, 8. C is 2, 4, 6, negative 2. It says that AB has midpoint D, so I'm going to have to find the midpoint of AB. I'm going to call that D. I'm going to have to find the midpoint of BC and call that E. I'm going to have to find the midpoint of AC and call that F. I know that my midpoint is average of the x values, comma, average of the y values. To find the average of two numbers, I add the coordinates together. So for my x's for a, b, I have negative 6 plus 2 over 2. And for my y's, I have negative 2 plus 8 over 2. That's negative 4 over 2, 6 over 2, negative 2 on the For BC, 2 and 6 for my x's. 8 and negative 2 for my y's. 8 over 2, 6 over 2, 4 comma. Finally for AC, negative 6 and 6. Negative 2 and negative 2. That's 0 over 2. That's negative 4 over 2. That's 0 comma negative 2. Now let's plot them. Negative 2 comma 3 is D. Does that look approximately right? Yes. I drew my triangle freehand. That looks pretty good. 4 comma 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 comma 3, again looks pretty good, that's my E, and F is 0, negative 2, that one looks perfect. Now, it's asking me to prove that it's a parallelogram, but not a rhombus. We know to do proof, we have to find distances unless they ask for a trapezoid. They don't ask for a trapezoid, so I'm going to do distances. When in doubt, do four distances. I'm, excuse me, when in doubt, do six distances. However, you have to do six if it's a square or a rectangle. This one, we only have to do four. It wants me to prove that A, D, E, F. So let's outline that so we can see what's going on here. A, D, E, F is this right here. So I'm going to find the distance of A, D. I'm going to find the distance of D, E. I'm going to find the distance of E, F. And I'm going to find the distance of FA. We did distance formula earlier. AD. We have change in X is 1, 2, 3, 4. Change in Y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 4 squared plus 5 squared. DE. It's just a straight line. So we don't have to do a radical. DE is just... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. EF. 
one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Again, FA, I, didn't, I don't have to do the radical because the straight line. One, two, three, four, five, six. Plus 25 equals radical 41. 16 plus 25 equals radical 41. There's the work. Now, to prove it's a parallelogram, I need opposite sides congruent. I have two pairs of opposite sides congruent. If it was a rhombus, all the sides would have to be the same. Clearly, they're not. So now, I have to write my explanation now. A, D, E, F is a parallelogram. Because it has two pairs of opposite sides congruent. Now you have to tell me what those two pairs of opposite sides are. DE is congruent to AF. AD because they have the same distance. Now we say that a, D, E, F is not a rhombus because not all sides are congruent. And we again have to be specific. Pick a pair of sides that aren't congruent. Let's say A, D. are not congruent because they do not have the same distance. Please study. Go through the review sheet multiple times. Go through more examples like these. You have worksheets on everything. And I hope you do well in your exam on Thursday. Hopefully you are utilizing this. If you are not, well, it's an opportunity that you have that you did not take advantage of. Enjoy.